It's time for our nursing tip of the week. And in this week's tip, we're talking about how to use an ultrasound to get a good IV start. First and foremost, make sure that at your hospital, you are allowed to use ultrasounds to start IVs. Most hospitals require some sort of course or competency to get checked off in order to be able to do this skill. Using an ultrasound to start an IV is like a chef's kiss of a skill to have because a lot of patients when they're in the hospital they have different anatomies they're swollen uh, maybe their vasculature is poor and it can be really difficult to identify where a vein is and be able to palpate it with like the traditional tourniquet and using heat all of those techniques so i'm going to show you kind of what it looks like to be able to identify a vein as well as what it looks like when you're advancing the needle. First, we need to find our target vein. You're gonna do this by popping a tourniquet on, getting some ultrasound lube, and actually using the ultrasound to find a vein. And you'll be able to tell it's a vein because when you press down on it, you'll see this big black hole or circle, the vein should collapse. This is another great video to compare veins with arteries to make sure you're not poking an artery. So if you compress the vein down, it should collapse. Arteries, they are not going to collapse and you're actually going to see this little winking because they're pulsatile. I also will like trace the vein up and to find, you know, which way does it go? Some veins are really squiggly, some are straight shooters, some bifurcate into different veins. So I like to make sure that I'm gonna have like a straight shooting path, so to speak. This is another great video to actually see what it looks like when you poke the needle in what it looks like on the ultrasound. So you should be able to actually see the needle tip coming down and then you can slide your ultrasound as you're advancing the needle. So that way you can follow that glowing tip and you should actually be able to see when that needle pokes through the vein. Also, ultrasound should have a depth gauge here on the side to see like how many centimeters deep the ultrasound's viewing. And so you wanna take a look at that because if it says like this, let's say this is one centimeter, this is two, then you know your, your vein is about one centimeter deep. And so you can anticipate how far you're actually going to need to poke in to get that vessel. Also, you can see this little dot right here. Sometimes that'll actually be on the, the other side of the ultrasound, but that little dot needs to face the patient's right side. This is so that way you are anatomy wise lined up. So if you're moving the ultrasound to the right, you're viewing things to the right or to the left. And it's not like, vice versa. I also just want to say this is a very awkward technique to do initially. It takes a lot of coordination You're using one hand for the ultrasound, one hand for the IV, and it can feel very weird. So practice makes perfect. Do this a bunch of times over and over and it'll become more like second nature just as it is starting a normal IV. I like to get all my IV stuff prepped, ready to go. So that way when I do find the vein, I can continue to hold that ultrasound, clean the skin off super well, let it dry, and then while I'm still holding the ultrasound, I can grab my IV and know exactly where I need to go. That way I'm not contaminating the skin. I know exactly where I'm going to be poking. And that's all I have time to talk about in this short video. So let me know if you have any questions.